All right, we are back, and we're going to we're back. Our Justice League uh, <laughs> review. We have Rocky, our DC uh, fanboy, and he a resident on, DC fanboy. Yeah, he hasn't been on the show in a, a long time because there's been um, nothing for DC to talk about, so we haven't had him on. Oh, oh gosh! Shot I mean, there hasn't really there. been anything to talk about. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, it's not like I'm like anyone. making fun of him. I'm That's true. There hasn't been anything to talk about. We had Wonder Woman. Which wasn't that good, so I guess it wasn't. Yeah, one eighty four. Yeah, yeah. Just brushed by it. We're like, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even. It it wasn't even worth bringing up. Honestly, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but this is finally something that was was the fans came together, said this needs to happen. Then people like me who said this is never fucking going to happen, and basically mocked them. I'm like, are you crazy? And I was wrong. I ate crow. And then me who said why would you remake a movie that was so bad? But I was even wrong. So there you go. There you go. So now we have Justice League, the Snyder Cut. In my opinion, it is the only version of this movie that should exist. Um, And so we're going to have a roundtable discussion about this. Um, Starting off, I go, we're going to start positive here. Can I go through my notes of the things I wrote down first? No, I have, no, hold on. You can use those notes towards the questions. We're going to make this simple. Oh. Okay. I actually what, did homework. I know. I want to go through my homework. Hold I did. on. Hold on. Let me control. I'm the moderator for this discussion. Yeah, okay. but it's going to be not good. So go ahead. You could you could have done it. I did. I did homework. I wrote down notes. And then you decided to do your own thing. I said to you beforehand, this is what All we're right. going to do. Go ahead. Ask your, ask your Twice. questions. All right, next movie, you're doing it then. Whatever. Ask your questions. Oh my! You can use your notes to answer these questions. I don't see what the big deal is. Just ask your questions. You know, I thought it was going to be Mark and Rocky arguing. I didn't know it would be <laughs> me and Mark. So this is why we've been together for so long. Oh, like old married couple. Ask your questions. You know what it is, Rocky? You're here. So he has to show yeah. up. Yeah, he has to show up. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Because I'm, uh, I'm not like this all the time. That's, no, that's, no. Yeah. I just want no. Rocky to think. <laughs> oh, Rocky, you're frozen. Rocky, you're, you're cool. frozen. You're frozen. And you're back. You gotta you're go, frozen again. go back to a, a better place in your house. Oh, am I unfrozen now? Yeah. You're unfrozen yeah, now, yes. Yeah. yeah, you know, my wife was thinking, well, just don't get me started on it. Go, go right. go close to the modem. Okay, it's just making macarons. We can. I, I want to talk... do a little baking episode. Yeah. Well, um, what did you guys like about this film? We'll start positive on this. I mean, for me personally, the character development was way better, especially for the Flash and Cyborg. Um, yes. And we'll start with Rocky. Rocky, what did you like about this film? As opposed to what you know, the 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 weed and cut, I guess, if you want to call I mean, it. It's like like even comparing it in that way, it's almost like apples and oranges. I mean, it's just like a completely different film. Um, I would say the big things that like I I took away from it that I really enjoyed that I wish had been in an earlier cut um, was probably the Flash storylines, and uh, and Cyborg as well. Um, but even more than that, like, and this might sound like uh, this is me being like, you know, like an edge lord or something. I like that it was like darker and that the heroes actually killed people. I enjoyed that. I mean, that was like, a, <laughs> it just, it just felt like, I mean, because I'm, I'm such a fan of the comic books, you know, and like, and, yeah. and especially the animated films too, like this stuff happens like all the time where like the, the heroes are actually not necessarily murdering people but they're you know they're doing battle in a way that's it's grievous to, to the mm. enemies you know? and, and you don't really get that with a lot of superhero movies i mean you got that with uh like the daredevil tv show you know he didn't necessarily kill anybody but it's like these battles were no but a superhero throwing a human actually would hurt them it's not like yeah exactly they would just bounce exactly. on the ground and that'd be it yeah 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 yeah, yeah so it was it took out like the uh the very I, I guess like the the lighter elements of it and kind of left you with like these these like massive heroes you know that like that actually there were stakes for people that were involved and there was you know actual consequences and and 
it was like a little it was a little more grim and i enjoyed that aspect but you know i'm trying to say this like in a nice way to not be like i just like violence so it's fair to do it's okay to say i mean that that's fair to say violence to go on your point though one thing i liked is the color palette was way better for this movie the josh weed one is way too bright and i like and especially when they're fighting inside the uh that area i don't know what you call it when they're fighting the uh the demons inside in in the the josh we didn't cut it was so purple the, yeah yeah so purple and, and this oh, you're is, talking the uh the silo for the nuclear yeah. plant it was more yeah. muted and i like that because it fit, fit the world and it, mm. it didn't have to be like like you felt like you're on an acid trip with that other one yeah. i don't know i, I yeah. thought the color palette was way better in this one um mark uh what did you like about this film what are the the, the few things you liked in this one well, the, the, I know we talked about at, like before the movie came out, the aspect ratio uh, stuff. And I found it wasn't as crazy as I thought it was going to be. Like, I kind of got used to it after a little bit. So I know we talked about, because it was shot in a different, or filmed in a different aspect ratio. They didn't convert it like they did for the first film. Yeah. So that was like, the first thing I was like, oh, I was thinking that would be an issue, but it ended up not being one. So that was good. Uh, the one woman fight scene in the bank, was actually a Wonder Woman fight scene. It wasn't as like a highlight version of a Wonder Woman fight scene. Right. Which was nice. Uh, We get our first mention of the Green Lantern, which I thought was exciting. I was like, ooh, Green Lantern was going to be a thing. Because I'm a Green Lantern guy. But uh, not the Ryan Reynolds version, but like an actual Green Lantern. Well, I mean, Uh, sorry, not to super interrupt the um so originally john stewart was supposed to appear at the end of uh Justice yes League. yeah and um the the studio i guess wouldn't allow him to do that and zach snyder i mean like uh, I, I know that he's a divisive person but um he decided that he would not take that away from a person of color and so the yes. scene that we got at the very end i don't want to give away spoilers in case anybody hadn't seen it but oh, well, we're, we're going we're to in a second. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry. So we got that's my second for every DC character. So that's why. So uh, like in the end, when we got Martian Manhunter in the last scene, instead of John Stewart, I, yeah. thought, I thought that was a great addition. But that was that was really cool of of, of Zack Snyder to to be like, I'm not going to take that away from a person of color. Yeah. We need more people of color uh, superheroes. So that was cool. I, I really yeah. wish I had seen John Stewart though, because I'm I'm a big John Stewart fan. Yeah, he's like one of the best Green Lanterns. But it, it, I definitely think it's easier to flesh out characters in a four-hour film than in a two-and-a-half-hour film. So that was totally, yeah. good to see that they actually fleshed out Flash and Cyborg. Because opposed to them, like in the Whedon version, they were just like there, and they happened. And Cyborg magically knew how to do everything. And Flash like just appeared, and there wasn't any real reasoning or how what Flash was doing. He was just a kid who had fast powers and lived in a little shack that Batman knew where it was and magically appeared there. And then Flash had an outfit and Cyborg was a machine man who magically knew how to do everything and didn't have to go through learning how to work in a body that he never had before. Right. So that stuff was good. It was good to see like that stuff. And there's actually like... It was really a cyborg movie more than a Justice League movie. It was basically right. a cyborg origin story yeah. movie as opposed to a yeah, Justice I mean, that's League. What, uh, Justice League just happened to be in it. Yeah, I mean, that's what Zack Snyder had said from the beginning that was um, cyborg was the heart of the movie. You know, yeah, and, was. and that was definitely taken out of the Whedon version, which I mean, I guess lends credence to everything that Ray Fisher has been saying about Whedon's abuse of power and, and his just... Yeah little lack of, of vision on on working on the film so well just like it this the the, the with the snyder version i don't care i was trying to remember i know they mentioned it in the weeding version a tiny bit but i also remember them doing it in batman versus superman when they showed like the Here, here's who's coming soon to the dcu and they had the little computer screen where it was like aquaman flash cyborg yeah yeah uh, and they showed like the mother box connecting to cyborg and making cyborg so it kind of makes sense yeah. if you're going to do a whole movie based off the mother boxes 
the guy who was made by a mother box should probably be a little bit more into the movie than just the happened to be there guy. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and the other thing that I wrote was like, it's not surprising that uh, Schneider's really good at action sequences. I mean, that's not, he, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not surprising. I mean, from 300 to now, it's just his action was yeah, really fight good. scenes are his forte, basically. Like, yeah, he's, well, I mean, like, I think. I think the one thing that separates Snyder from everybody else is that Snyder doesn't use shaky cams. Yes. I appreciate that so much because I'm so tired of like jump cuts and shaky cams and fight scenes. Yeah. Or fast yeah. zooms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can like, I can really appreciate, like, I know a lot of people like get on them about the slow motion and, or like the speed up from slow motion. I can really appreciate yeah. that. I'm trying to capture like what it looks like on the comic book page, like an action sequence. Yeah. So, so I enjoy that about him, even though a lot of people kind of kind of diss him for it. But I also just enjoy the fact that there's no shaky cam because I'm so tired of them trying mm. to hide like bad choreography. Yeah. By just shaking the camera a lot. or computerized choreography. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like a two computerized creatures fighting each other. Yeah, uh, we don't have to bring Black Panther. I did this in chronological order. So my next one is Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Bar- Martian Manhunter. I think that was an awesome yeah, that, that little... scene with uh, Clark's mom and that you see it in the, the trailer that we saw, like the last trailer that they showed before the movie came out, they showed that scene where Martha goes outside and her eyes turned red. It was like, Ooh, was she a Kryptonian or what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. And then like, now it's like, how did I not realize that's Martian Manhunter? That's and like that what Martian Manhunter's eyes do. Cut out in the Josh Whedon, you know, but yeah, he's been totally in all out. the movies. I mean, his character was in yeah. Superman, just Batman yeah. versus uh, Superman. Yeah. So it's so cool to have this one character. Now we find out he's been, uh, you know, hitting alien this whole time, Martian Manhunter, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. I um, I mean, I like, I obviously enjoyed seeing Martian Manhunter. Um, I love Martian Manhunter. He's one of my favorite favorite characters. I was a little upset that he didn't have a giant collar like he does in like the animated series or the comic books. Like, yeah, I just I could see that. I could see so that cool was one of the color. things you could get rid of because it's kind of uh, yeah, it's yeah, more based guys, like more the uh, the DC television universe Martian Manhunter than it is the yeah. comic book Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I yeah, think I totally it was cool. sure. But I think I think my only problem with that scene was it kind of undercut like a really emotional scene between between Martha and Lois. Like, I think that was a great scene where she's like, I can't even tell people that I'm proud of my son because they don't yeah. know that, it's him. you know, like it was such a good emotional scene. But then like, like when he comes out and turns into Martian Manhunter, you're like, like oh, all right. Well, yes, yeah. but it was coming from Martian Manhunter and he yeah. was trying to move along Lois here. Well, because I think saying... it was like it was a great way of like, because they had talked about earlier, like not right, like not I can't remember exactly where before that that like lois lane is basically like the the crux of the whole the key like superman yeah. turning bad thing which which so, i kind of i took all that to be like martian manhunter is essentially uh, essentially the doctor strange yes of, exactly that's what i thought movie. yeah where yeah. like he i mean because his ability to read people's minds and all that like yeah. he kind of knows and kind of wants to lead situations into the way that'll end the best which yeah he does in the comics a lot as well so yeah the one yeah. percent chance that we have of making things right. yeah so yeah. so gentlemen that was the good i i, I want to i still have more about... i still have more good stuff how much <laughs> i have right. good stuff i was all right, all i right. got into this movie I, I know, but... make me how watch much... a four-hour movie i'm gonna take notes on it how well anything not much we longer. haven't Relax. talked about not much I... longer calm down i'm calm only a couple more things uh Towards the end of the movie, where Batman lands on that tank of a Batmobile. At the end of the movie? Yeah, towards the end of the movie. I was like, I don't remember that being in Batman vs. Superman, but that's a Batmobile. That's a Dark Knight Returns thing. Yeah, okay. So that was like, I don't remember that from the Batman vs. Superman movie. I honestly don't remember what it looked like. It was just a huge tank looking Batmobile. It had like treads and everything. I was like, oh, that's a Batmobile. His thing just turns into wacky stuff all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, that was, like, uh, specifically taken from the pages of Dark Knight Returns. Um, you can see it in the animated version, too. He drives, like, a yeah. big yeah. thing. Like, the mutant I don't remember and... it from, like, the movie versions. That's what I was like. That's awesome to see oh, yeah. it in, like, the actual. Zack Snyder's like, really good at Easter eggs, stuff I mean. that they did, yeah. So. Uh, the new Deathstroke scene, I thought, was great. It was extended. It actually fleshed out the character of Deathstroke more. So. Did you the fear next... 
I, I'm watching this going, okay, I heard the rumor Deathstroke's going to be in this. And I also heard he's supposed to be doing stuff with Batman, which was probably a rumor. And I'm like, I'm almost done with this film. Where the fuck is Deathstroke? And then, then yeah. he shows up at the very end uh, yeah, twice. With the, worst, with the worst Lex Luthor. But besides that, that's another But then he shows up in, in the dream sequence um, with Batman again. Um, yes, so I was in the injustice hoping- dream, as I call it. I was kind of hoping for more of uh, uh, Deathstroke, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the, along so the same thing with like, Joker. I was like waiting for that too. I was like, oh, where's this Joker scene that was in the trailer that we were all talking about? And then it's like a kind of a, variant. I mean, I hate to say a throwaway yeah. sequence, but kind of a throwaway sequence where you get like, you know, Deathstroke and Joker in like a dream sequence. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not actually a dream sequence, though. So, I mean, like, the entire sequel to this movie was supposed to be in that timeline. And that's mm-hmm. why you see that you see that timeline when Cyborg um, first interacts with the mother, mother box. Yeah. When they bring oh, him back oh. Superman. So, it's like, it's not necessarily, it's like a premonition, really. But, I mean, it is, it, it is kind of a dream se- sequence, but, but not quite. It's just like. Well, uh, the guy did the same. Didn't they do this? They did the same thing in Batman vs. Superman. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Where he has the dream but, sequence with Superman. Did you notice the flash? He had the mustache with the helmet. And in yeah. the dream sequence he had, that was the flash that reached out yeah. to him. It reminds me, and I'm only going to compare it because I have nothing else to compare it to. It reminds me of Tony Stark having the, having the dream sequence about Thanos. Of, yeah. Of them all being dead, yeah. laying on a dead pile. laying on the thing. And, yeah. yeah. That's that what made me think the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I- so my only problem with that Deathstroke scene, though, the one with on Lex Luthor's boat, which, and the first one, it was atrocious, like just uh, Lex Luthor with his line of like, "We'll start a league of our own." Like, yeah, sh- shut up, shut up, Joss Whedon. Yeah, but like this one was supposed which to. It's not up- really Joss Whedon's fault, kind of, because wasn't a lot of that stuff shot during Zack Snyder's filming? No, well, no, it was because like stuff. the dialogue would change. So yeah, yeah. Dialogue. yeah, but like so. That was actually supposed to set up the Ben Affleck uh, solo Batman movie. Yeah. Because the whole movie was going to be him versus Deathstroke, which like, yeah. so when I saw it, it was kind of like, it made me a little sad inside that we're not going to actually get to see that. Well, that was my other thought. Like, well, we, I don't know if Brian has this one of his questions. So let Brian go to his next question. Are you, yeah. Well, what I wanted to talk about, because we're going in that direction right now. Yeah. Uh, what didn't work for you? And I know we're, we're, we're going into that direction right now. So this is perfect. Um, I, I would just say for me, what didn't work, um, probably two things. Some, I love the slow motion, but that uh, when um, the Flash meets the, the girl, and I know she's a popular character. I don't know Iris her West. name. Yeah. Iris West, yeah. The, the, the slow motion I was, with the music, I was just kind of like, it was a little cheesy. Well, because he's so fast. That I get it. You know what it was? Everything else is in slow motion because he's we've working. seen we've seen that done before. So for me, it was just kind of like, well, all it's right, kind of on. along the lines of the Quicksilver scenes from X Men. Yeah, yeah, I, I think for, for the me, only it didn't do anything. In, the only big difference there, and like this is something like you you'll notice if like you watch through it again. Um, and Zack Snyder mentioned it in the interview was that like for someone to be moving that fast and to touch another person, yeah, you would you would just completely tear them to shreds. Yeah. So that's when yeah, like yeah. you see him just like gently like trying to move and manipulate things. So instead of like Quicksilver where he just like grabs people and runs and it's like played up for laughs, mm. there is kind of like a serious, uh, a serious undertone there where he's like trying to do everything gently so that like he doesn't hurt anybody. I I yeah. get that, I but would, it just it was just kind of like yeah, well, all right. Thing. His shoes his shoes splitting apart though was pretty awesome though. Like, yeah. Was, was yeah. 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 Um, and then. Um, yeah, the ending uh, with this premonition and stuff, I like. I thought it was cool. Um, I, it's weird. Okay, so for me, the Joker part, I had, I liked the look. I thought Leto uh, brought it. I think it was a better Joker. But sometimes I still heard Ace Ventura in my head when he mm. did some of this stuff. <laughs> but it was very Mark. You, you said this before, and I. It reminded me is very injustice. Uh, yeah. Joker esque, and I, you know what? I will give him props because I thought it was a much better Joker from Suicide Squad. But yeah. at the same time, he does those in, in, certain things, and I just have Ace Ventura in my head. It's just me. It, it it was like I'm half and half. I liked it, but at the same time, maybe I needed more 
uh, to, for this character to grow. So I would be used to it, but I, maybe I'm still have PTSD from the old Joker. I don't know. Mm. Um, but that that's kind of the stuff that didn't work for me. But overall, I mean, I just enjoyed it for what it was. And I don't know if you guys have any what didn't work for you at all. Um, it wasn't your favorite I'll, part. I'll let Rocky go next. Well, so, I mean, for the, uh, it's hard being such a big Zack Snyder fan and, like, anticipating this movie for, like, four years and then, like, finally get it. And, like, you just, you're, like, excited. It's like, it was, like, yeah, Christmas Yeah, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Well, like, to tell you the truth, um, I didn't really like Batman and the Joss Whedon version. Like, you know, I thought, like, especially yeah. when he gets hit by the police car and he's like, oh, my knees or, or like, you know, whatever yeah. stupid thing that was. At the same point, I don't, I don't think Batman, like, he did improve. I don't think he improved much because, like, I, we saw, like, a very uh, lighthearted, optimistic Batman. And, like, in a way, I guess it's, I mean, it, it's, it's good to have a change up and see something different. But at the same point, like, you know, when he gives Alfred the speech about, like, he's like, oh, I'm doing this only off of faith. And it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that seems mm. like the opposite of what Batman would do. You know, yeah. and it's like, Seems like forced. I said, I mean, it's good. Yeah. It's good to have a different iteration. You know, I mean, I can I can give him credit for that, but he still felt like a little ineffectual. You know, like he, he just wasn't. Like he wasn't switched. Batman enough. They switched. Yeah. Superman should be about faith and hope, right? Yeah. They switched roles. Maybe that was the whole point because he he let someone die. Because after Batman versus Superman, he should have been there for Batman. Him. Had to, yeah. Yeah, he should have been there for him, but he was so I mean, against both him. their moms have the same first name. He should have been there for the guy. I know, I know. If your name's Martin, right. your kids, your mother's it's automatic Martin. best friend them right there. Yeah. But, but I mean, um... maybe, maybe that's the whole point that like he is taking on the mantra of what Superman stood for to yeah. get people together. But you're right, Batman, he was almost too too positive. Like he was too like it's yeah. like take it too down enough. Team builder enough. guy, too. Take like, it down like, enough. Be a little yeah. bit more bitter. A little bit more cynical, yeah. but you know, yeah. But um, I mean, other than that, um, I mean, I really can't say there wasn't much that didn't really work for me. I mean, there was, um, I mean, like everything was just it. Like I said, I was just so excited. It was such like a Christmas morning moment for me as an adult that um, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't think to pick too much apart. Um, other than just my disappointment in like a lot of the storylines that won't be explored, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, like Lois's positive pregnancy test. Yeah. I'm, I'm real. I'm like, so like seeing those things, like I wish, I wish the things that like we won't see in the future were almost, were cut out still because it's just kind of disappointing to, to, yeah. to see them, you know, and know that nothing else is going to come of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think it's the biggest disappointment of the whole movie is that, things might not happen now so we can't get more yeah yeah mark for anything, me it was right? uh going off of rocky with the batman thing i don't like the fact that batman still feels like he has to change his voice even though he's only talking to other superheroes that know who he is so why do you have to use your batman voice i think it's a voice modulator yeah but just in. turn it off it makes no sense just turn it off everyone knows who you are all the people in your team know you're bruce wayne you don't need to change your voice. It was a small little thing that bothered me. But uh, I don't know why. It's just annoying to me. It's That's like, fine. I don't, like, There's really not much. It's really hard to find anything, really. I mean, yeah, even, it was well, even even besides the fact that it was four out. hours. Yeah. That yeah. was another thing that bothered me. It's like this easily, like if they were like doing it in the movie theater, I wrote down like this could have been done just like Avengers, like cut it in half. It really the first was. half be one movie, had the second half be the be second two movie. Movies. That was a yeah. well, I mean, like that was that was my thing though. So like with the Avengers, um, they there was like a definitely halfway point, you know, like yeah. where Thanos wins and then everything that came after that. So like unfortunately, like with this one, there was no like actual definitive halfway point. I don't yeah. I don't see where they would have cut it because I mean you you get that Steppenwolf battle like right at the end. So it's yeah. like yeah. yeah, I don't see where they would have cut it properly. But I think he could have put one in. Like, he could have structured one where he could have had one so i mean i think I, I think a pro it's a it's a con and a pro right we got a four we got the entirety of what his vision was which is a freaking amazing yeah but we get to watch it at home so we could have paused it halfway yeah. Yeah, exactly it, yeah there's chapters and when you when you paused it it showed uh markers where all the chapters were yeah yeah, so yeah. 
you could easily go back uh, and resume it. Well, also, yeah, you can like stop a, it on the chapter like, screen. It was almost stuff. like eight episodes, you know, in, in yeah. a way. Yeah. So. Totally. So, I mean, in the theater, it was released in other countries, or it's going to be. Was and it they have an intermission in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. And honestly, I would have loved to see this in the theater. Um, I would, I mean, not now. If this was a different world right now, I would have saw mm. this in the theater. Um, I, I, I mean, after Endgame being three, I think it was almost over three hours. It was three hours, two minutes. It was like, yeah. So, I mean, hours. another hour, it could have been, it would have worked fine in the movie theaters. Yeah. But, but it's in just the movie kinda, theater, you yeah. only get a certain amount of plays. And to do a four hour movie yeah. is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. at home, I mean, this is a win-win for HBO, right? You know, people are going to subscribe. Well, the whole reason, like, the reason why this kind of, like, Rocky probably knows more about the reasoning behind it, but, I mean, the HBO Max coming mm-hmm. around basically is what started this, like, them yeah. deciding to do it because they needed something to kind of launch HBO Max with. That well, I mean, like, it's not... Subscribe, so it's like... Yeah, yeah I mean, that's like it's credit, like, the massive movement that was involved in it, especially, like, um, so I... I as most people might know, I guess, um, Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide um, mm. while they were in post-production on this film. And that's why it ended up being handed off to Joss Whedon. Um, I imagine there's some red tape there, you know, like where like the studio forced him out because they didn't like the movie or, you know, whatnot. But not only did like this huge, like release the Snyder Cut movement happen, but most of it and most of the people that were involved in it um, went on to donate to... Um, uh, different suicide awareness mm. um, organizations, uh, specifically for Zack Snyder, and they ended up raising, I think, um, half a million dollars. Wow, for that's suicide cool. prevention. Yeah. So that was so, I mean, the whole thing. Also, there was a huge beginning, movement, but but yeah, HBO Max definitely like yeah. If HBO Max didn't exist, and it's the only reason that I had HBO Max for the past six months, just waiting for like when this movie was yeah. going to come out. Because so. originally, the thought process was, I believe, when HBO Max launched. The selling point of HBO Max was that this was going to be four one-hour episodes, kind of. Yeah. Like initially, they, they that's what they wanted him. to do, and then they Zack Snyder him, said, said, "No, no. I want to do the whole thing. It was one, yeah. one shot." So I think that was the other thing. Like they had planned on being like, we have people locked in for at least a month because we can yeah. do four weeks of this move, this movie, yeah. and then lock people in for at least get a month out of them, and then. Look at all the other fun stuff we have on HBO Max. But HBO Max is doing but, very well. Needless yeah, no, to I think it's a lot like of before it started. Stuff. That was the yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, I watch more on HBO than probably Hulu and HBO. I barely watch Netflix. And yeah. Disney, yeah. I watch one show a week. Where HBO, yeah. I watch multiple yeah. things. Like yeah. I think yeah, HBO sure. still. I mean, like, yeah. Like their massive amount of stuff. I mean, they have like what you know, Studio Ghibli. They have like yeah, all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, and they have like I mean, all the DC stuff basically. John, yeah, yeah. John Oliver, he's yeah. got the Bill Mars, you got documentaries. Oh, and Rocky's hiding those, from the kids. Run away, run away. Yeah. Um, so the children. We're almost done, Rock. Um, oh, no, you're we, kidding. we did talk about this throughout the whole thing. Um, what was better or worse than the original version? And there's a lot of great comparison videos on YouTube, which I've been watching. But yeah. for me, I think this movie was way superior. And I also it, it just shows you the ego Josh Whedon had because the farm scene alone, he was like that farm scene when he, when Superman lands and has a conversation with Lois and his mother was mm. perfect. That would have worked in the original film. But for some reason, Josh Whedon was like, Nope, you're coming back. We're going to digitally take out your mustache and mm. I'm going to rewrite all the dialogue. And it sucks. And I just don't mm. get the ego of this man to make them that scene would have worked both ways. I also, the, they also wonder like Rocky probably knows more about this because he's linked into the DC universe and all that. But I like thought as I was watching it, like how much was WB like or D whoever the producer like WB into like when Josh Sweden took over being like, hey, we need to get rid of this stuff. We need to get rid of this. You need to make this shorter. We want this taken care of. We want this to kind of we don't want this to happen because we want to save it for another movie. So I wonder like a lot of that, like Rocky was saying earlier about the red tape stuff, like how much. Oh, you're talking about uh, in, interference in, like, by yeah, the move uh, into, like, make, Warner make Brothers. Josh Whedon do stuff. Yeah. I mean, like there, 
there was like a, an excessive amount too, especially, I mean, Suicide Squad was actually supposed to be about parademons. Yeah. All those, all those bad guys that they were beating up that were taking over the city were supposed to be parademons. So it was supposed to be interconnected and the amount of studio interference was just insane. And that's what everybody said that, you know, this wasn't going to happen. This movie was never going to happen because of the studio. Mm. And I'm surprised it did. I'm grateful that it did. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there's, I honestly, we can just wipe away the original version. The Josh Whedon cut, in my opinion, mm. is just, it's yeah. just kind of garbage. It, it just, I don't know. It just shows why did he have to redo some of these scenes that work perfectly well in the original and like he redid scenes just so he can add a one-liner i mean there are scenes where the one-liners that aren't that funny and the well, whole i think it's like rocky touching... saying kind of need to like there has to be i don't know if they'll ever get the answer to it but i don't know if josh whedon would ever give the answers but like what was like his decision to change things and what was not his decision to change things it was probably like, what punch things it up. that wb forced him to change I... I think they kind of just gave him like free reign to be like, just make this make this a Marvel movie, basically. Yeah, you know, and yeah. That's what he tried doing, and like a lot of it just fell fell short. I mean, especially I mentioned it before, um, just the scene where like Flash falls on Wonder Woman, you know, like yeah, yeah, and or like the or the scene where uh, uh, what's the, Aquaman sits on the lasso and starts like you know like yeah. talking to the to Wonder Woman, like it it just. I don't know. It's just, it, it was just terrible. I mean, especially now, like when, er, with everything that's come out about Joss Whedon and, and his, his treatment of women and, and such. Yeah. Like, well, I think it was also like a lot of it, like, was just like you're saying, like trying to make a Marvel movie, but it was like taking a movie that was already basically done from Snyder's perspective and then like trying to meld Zack Snyder's way of doing things with the way Josh Whedon films movies just doesn't yeah. work, doesn't connect right. Yeah, so we know Josh I mean, Whedon can make decent movies like Avengers, which he did, was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. So there are he had he can direct good movies. It's just I think their two ways of doing film just don't combine well, and that's what caused Justice League to be so bad originally. It just yeah, didn't I mean, work out. It, it's like really, an, it's unfortunate. I mean, like uh, Zack Snyder is like he's a director that you can look at a movie of his. And know that you're watching a Zack Snyder movie, even if like you don't know anything else about it. Like you know yeah, it's a Zack right. Snyder movie. And I don't, I don't think, I don't think Marvel really, really plays plays to that at all. I mean, I can't watch like a Marvel movie and tell you what the director is right away. Yeah. You know, other than the fact that you know I'm a fan and like I know who the director. You know, like there's no there's no signature on it. You well, know? like the ones that the Rooster Brothers do, you can tell it's a Rooster Brothers. Like the way the action's shot and different things. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I can tell it's a Russo brothers. And the but, writing, you could tell it's a Russo brothers movie. That's like the only ones I could think of, top of my head. Yeah, but like no, I mean, but especially Thor, because you could tell the first Thor was a Kenneth Branagh because it was more, more uh, the 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 words than the actions in the first Thor movie, which is a Kenneth Branagh kind of thing. But for anybody, it doesn't pop out. Yeah, like I would not know. know yeah, actors, yeah. Like, but, yeah. But, yeah, I think <laughs> Snyder. I mean, I I mean, for the most part, have liked all his movies, and yeah. I always like the longer cuts. <laughs> I think, well, I think the one was thing that, like, yeah, director. like the one thing I got from this version of Justice League is that it needs to, like, if he's allowed to keep doing DC movies or whatever, it's like it, people, the big studios need to realize he's okay to be by himself. Like, leave him to do his thing. Like, 300 was great. And, like, when the studio comes in and starts monkey around with what he did, it turns out bad. Justice League is an example, and Sucker Punch, which was a total disaster because the studio came in after the fact and told him to redo so many things that it's just like, when he's able to work in his own sandbox without other people playing with his toys, he's okay. He can do it. You don't need to, like, mess with him. So I think that's, like, the main thing that I came, that I got out of this this film. But, yeah I'm sure um so i mean brian i know that like you had these questions like what works for us what doesn't work for us um i wanted to ask you guys like was there something in the movie that you absolutely loved like just fell in love with like it's just like this is just amazing and blew you away i mean i'll i'll go first because it's probably one that a lot of people are gonna say uh the way they got rid of steppenwolf just that scene of Aquaman jamming the trident through 
Steppenwolf and then like swinging him towards the portal, and then you get and the then, slow motion, like yeah, it's gonna hit Wonder him. Woman with the music playing. Yeah, there's another thing of Zach Whedon's, which I, which is the difference between the Zack Snyder and the Whedon cut, is like the music choices. Zack Snyder is very good at picking music. Josh Whedon not so much. But anyways, so you get that scene, and then like it lands in the through the portal and step at Dark Side's feet, and like. Darkseid just basically just squashes Steppenwolf's head and is just like, well, I we guess we got to do it the old-fashioned way. I was like, where was... That was like 10 seconds of film. You could have just put it to the original one. That would have just made that movie so much better. I know, I know. And it was just a lot of that stuff, which was kind of like little tiny things that could have made the first one better. And it's like, how much of that was an option that he could have just put into the movie? Because Zack Snyder only shot, I think we said, like four minutes of film. There's only four I, minutes of new footage. Yeah, that, so it, like, that dream sequence that, so I think was majority. Josh Whedon had a bucket load of film that he could have used that he just decided not to or was not allowed to use. Yeah. I don't again. We don't know like what Josh Whedon could do when yeah. he took over the film. We don't know like was he given the option of using these scenes or was he just told you have to reshoot this stuff? Who knows? Or could Josh Whedon could have been yeah. like, I want to reshoot these. I got to make it punchy. So what about you, Brian? What did, what did you? Uh, for me, uh, quickly to go on what Mark's saying about the music, because I think the music was so much better. Uh, the music was by uh, Drunkie XL, which did yep. Batman versus Superman. Yeah. And Josh Whedon cut was Danny Elfman. And that's yeah. why they actually did, when you see Batman for the first time, they played the old Batman yeah, it's theme. the old Batman theme, yeah. Which was kind of mm-hmm. cool. Which was you cool, know, but but you yeah. know what? At the same time, I think Junkie XL much better score. And like the one other, like score. the one other big difference for me, music wise, was the scene of Aquaman after he saves the guy in the ocean, and he's walking on like the the inlet, like the rock path. Oh yeah, yeah. To the ocean. Yeah. And like the music in the first movie was this like did not correlate to that scene. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was more like fair. hard rocky kind of music. Yeah. I think and then this one was more like, yeah, just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. But for me, I mean, honestly, like the the epilogue was my favorite part of the film because I've seen, you know, we saw a lot of that stuff, yeah. but it was more fleshed out. And I liked, it made me in, like the Flash and Cyborg and Cyborg had more agency. And I think it his character meant more. And I was invested in his character arc actually he was given a before, point basically yeah, he was before, giving a reason for being there before it was nothing yeah. but i liked cyborg i wanted more of him. i want more of him but the epilogue uh needless to say i have nitpicks with the joker i really enjoyed the epilogue um because it made me want that film where you have batman the joker and you have um deathstroke deathstroke on this mission, I mean, they'd, they'd have they'd have to recast Mira, but besides that, that's another story. Yeah, another yeah but like when they're <laughs> like, "Why did you bring him along?" and you know, so and the Joker, he's got all he's got all the sheriff badges. I mean, yeah. it was it was it was the Joker you, we've seen in the comics and in uh, in the video game. It was kind of an interesting take that I wanted more of. And the epilogue, it was sort of like when that when it I saw that. I was like, God damn it. Like, seriously, it's gonna, this is the ending. And yeah, I yeah. really want that movie. I want well, that. Well, going movie. off of that, I have one for you, which I not, might not be one of your questions, Brian, but I wanted to ask Rocky this. What do you think a sequel would have been like? I mean, well, so I know that, I know that the sequel would have been that, that whole desert, dusty Batman storyline, you know, like, um, and I believe. Uh, cyborg was going to end up being like just a torso that they carried mm-hmm. around with, them. and it was just going to be this whole post-apocalyptic uh, thing where not only was Darkseid fighting the heroes of the Justice League, but he was also going to fight all the heroes of Earth. And so, I mean, that's what I know from like just you know Zack Snyder interviews and whatnot. So, yeah, I. Th- I, I mean, it would have been a wild ride for sure. And it would have been cool to see them in that kind of setting, you know, as like a, like an Elseworld story almost, mm. um, which I really enjoy. Like some of my favorite graphic novels are like, you know, um, Gotham by Gaslight, Superman, Red Sun, you know, where it's a different take on them. So 
That would have been then, really cool. Then going off that, my next question for you, as I was writing them down, so I wrote down questions for you as I was writing stuff because I was like, I know Rocky will have actual answers to this. Um, what do you think this would have changed had this been the original Justice League movie? Like for the oh. DC movie universe? I, uh, I would have changed this conversation completely because we would all be talking about how much, um, I mean, maybe not me personally, but everybody else online would be talking about how much it's, they, it sucked and they hated it. I don't mm-hmm. think that people would like this movie as much if we got this originally instead of the Joss Whedon version originally. Really? I don't know. Because about I think that. the Joss Whedon version sucked so bad that no matter what this movie was going to be, we were going to be praising it. So, so I, I mean, think I, that's true though. I think, I, I think I, 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 I'm more thinking like, how would this, if this was the movie that we had gotten four years ago? I mean, think, well, think about this. How would this affect DC movies as a whole? We would have more I DC movies. I think we'd have movies. way more movies than what we've yeah, got. We would, we would for sure, but. I mean, think about this alone. Like, if, like, if we didn't get Wonder Woman 1984 like this year too, or it was just super mm. cheese. If we were watching a film, and we saw Wonder Woman chuck a guy into a wall and break his yeah. neck and blood spatter on the wall, or yeah. cut off Steppenwolf's head, like people would never, never have like never have stopped complaining about that about how wonder woman's not supposed to do that and see i don't think i think i think if we had gotten that this movie four years ago wonder woman 84 wouldn't exist yeah i would have been better i don't think that you could have done this movie then done wonder woman which wonder woman i think would have been more in vain or in line with this justice league because if you would have had her being so brutal in justice league and then like neutering her so to speak kind of in wonder woman and then even making her less superhero in wonder woman 84 right i don't think you would have even gotten that far and i also think because originally i remember them planning doing a cyborg film and a flash film which is still separate doing flash. and flash everyone was happening. like why they were barely in justice league yeah, yeah yeah why do they deserve their own movie and now I think if people had seen this originally four years ago, it would make more sense. Like, oh, of course, I want to see more of Cyborg. How do you, like, I want to see what he does after this. And I want to see well, Flash. Because all that would have led to what you're talking about with the sequel. And it would have yeah, made so- more of a consistent storyline through DC. Which I don't even know if you'd even get the Joker movie that we got. The, the- well, that's separate. I feel like yeah, we would have gotten that no matter that means what. I don't think, I think if this movie was as if Jared Leto's character in this joke in this Justice that, League movie was in that exist, four years though. ago, but that didn't exist though. The original. No, what I'm saying, but if this exist, movie had come out four exist. years ago, I don't know if we would have gotten that Joker movie. We wouldn't. No, we wouldn't even gotten that. That epilogue didn't exist. He literally that was all brand new film this past yeah. year. So well, I know, but I'm saying if this, if you're taking this movie, yeah, which originally would have come out four years ago, but that epilogue, he would have had some kind of epilogue oh. in that. I, yeah, I, I I think we would have got a PG-13 Justice League Scott Snyder uh, movie that would have been more in or line. Or Zack Snyder movie. Zack Snyder oh, would have been more in line. Scott Snyder's a good, a good writer for Batman. Yeah. Yes, he is. He would have been uh, more in line, right? And then the DVD home version would have been the four-hour cut because mm. we all know that movie theaters are not going to do a four-hour movie. Why? But I'm, that's what he does that annoys me more films. with DC movies. I'll just say this. I know I've said this before. There's nothing that annoys me more with these DC movies than the fact that they release one movie in the theaters and then they like put out the good movie on the DVDs. But Mark, it's like, Mark, if you want to be DC, decision. you want to be yeah, like, it's, right there it's with all Marvel. business. Uh, listen, no, if you want to be right there with Marvel, then no. fight and be like, hey, release no. this movie as a four hour movie. Needless you don't want to put say it in your theater, you think, that's your problem. Needless to say what you think, a movie theater can't show a four hour film that many times compared to a two-hour film but they've done it before film. brian i don't know why we you have, keep saying but, this no, but yes, very, but it's so long. it's so gone with the wind was so a long rare. movie i mean they've done this can, before how many movies were honestly, out when like, gone with the wind was out mark one you were watching I, one movie i can honestly say like right now like i can name three movies braveheart titanic yeah. and gods and generals that's it yeah. for like for three decades mark like so i mean it's but it's I a rare thing yeah i mean if like i like we said earlier if end game was three hours and two minutes yeah i'm pretty sure justice league if it come out 
when it was supposed to come out as if it was a four hour movie i don't think he could have done, done it, it. or yeah. even split it into so, two movies then he could have done it that way th- that was the original but, plan it was going to be a two-parter yeah. that was the original so, i mean plan. i remember me and brian watched uh devil's rejects and uh three from hell uh double feature yeah and to tell you the truth dude my ass hurt just sitting here in that chair even there yeah. was an intermission like it, it yeah. sucked I, mean, I can understand why they don't but you could do an intermission but, thing like they did, like but, they're doing now. But, they're releasing but Mark, it. With I'm just saying, theaters are are not are. It's hard. Okay, Disney has power. I hate to break it to you, but Disney. Well, I know that. The I'm hammer down with wants theaters. to be as yeah. big as a four hour film is Marvel a lot is. harder to convince to play. You have to you have to get more money, right? So how many times can you air a four hour movie in one day compared to something shorter? So what I'm yeah. saying is, it's a it's a riskier move, and if I think, in my opinion, I think he would. We would have got a two to three hour version of this in the theater, and then a director's cut on disc because that's what he normally always does. That's no, all I'm man. saying. I'm just I'm to saying, saying your opinion. I get it. I'm agree. I'm finally saying that a DC movie was a good movie. Yeah, and now yeah, I think yeah. it could have made really its way into that. the theater and been actually good. And now you're telling me. That it probably shouldn't have happened. It it wouldn't have been. That's not what I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying it for business wise, this is why it doesn't happen. A four hour movie is a hard sell, no matter who makes it. I'm not talking about him. I'm saying anybody can do a four hour film. So you're saying for- if this came out in the theaters four years ago, you wouldn't have gone to it because it's too long. That's not what I said. I'm saying yeah, I, 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 what I, my point is a not movie theater is not going to. What's going on here? I. It's not personal. You're taking it personal. No, but I'm saying what DC I'm saying fans, is, if people who like these movies that's not went the point. to the theater. So it's I don't see the why. I, I'm not saying the, people would not go. What? I'm saying for a theater to put a four-hour film in, it's a bigger risk. I, I have to be shorter. I mean, I have to say here too, like there's a lot of people I know that are DC fans that have wanted to watch this movie. The fact that it is four hours, it's like you have to reserve four hours out of your time. It took me all day yeah. to watch it. It's, it it's difficult. I work, I work second shifts. Like I, we also have kids at home. So it's like, it's like impossible for us to find like a four hour. Like we found one, finally found like a four hour yeah. like clip where we could sit down and watch it the other night. And if like you're putting a four hour film in a movie theater, it's like, that's a long fucking time. We don't I mean, have the time for that. You know, I started at 11 and it ended almost at three o'clock. Now, yeah. imagine going to the theater. You got to drive to the theater. And well, then you remember, there. you also stopped it here and there to go to the bathroom and get drinks and things and stuff yeah, like that, I don't too. Think, so. yeah. I don't think this movie would have released in any other format than the format it is now where you can watch it when Absolutely. you want. Yeah. yeah. Mark, but, it's not, I'm not saying personally. I'm just saying business-wise. I, I, when's the next time we're ever going to see a four-hour film in the theater? It, yeah. It's going to be a very... Well, and now I mean, it's honestly, when is the next time we're going to go into a theater? Yeah, for, for real. But in this yeah. area, we don't even have any. So, so I, I did want to actually say before, and like <clears throat> we were talking about, like the parts that we fell in love with, um, the uh, the scene with Flash where he time travels. Yeah. Um, even by like a second, like that whole scene, and everything that he's thinking in his head, and everything that like the everything that kind of culminates in there was just like it was such a beautiful moment. Like it was like I almost felt myself get teary eyed over it because it was just such a perfect mm. moment. And I have never seen time travel done in such a way. And especially like with like a kind of redundant, you know, character that can run as fast as the speed of light. And, you know, that that happens in so many different comic books and so many different comic book properties Um, to see it like that was like something new. And it was something that was just like amazing. And it was an awesome emotional moment. And I'm so happy that instead of Flash being just like this doofus, we yes. saw that he was he yeah. was a genius, a genius kid that <clears throat> yeah was just like had a had a bad hand dealt to him and he was and he was dealing with it and dealing with it with humor and and kind of finding his powers and I think I even Flash the, was like the, the star. The, yeah, I even love the fact that they actually like even fleshed out the Billy Crudup character more of his dad. Yeah. Like actually yeah. gave him like an actual like part yeah. as opposed to just being behind the glass in the weeding cut. He actually like told Barry like no I don't want you to do this I don't want you to like he actually like had scenes and actually acted and even the fact that William Dafoe was originally going to be in this movie and was not in the Whedon cut it makes you kind of want to watch William Dafoe it's like what was the thought process on that it was going to connect it actually gives Aquaman a story for his movie yeah yeah 
I kind of yeah. want to watch Aquaman now. It made me want to watch Aquaman. I'll yeah. be honest. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's weird though is watching uh, Mira speak with an English accent. That's very weird. Yeah. I mean, it was probably tough for Brian weird. to see Mira because, you know, his love for Johnny Depp, and he was probably like <laughs> swearing at the screen. But she's I been actually, can- I, she's been canceled, so she's. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I made a joke every time she came up on screen when I was watching it with Stephanie. I was like, "Oh, look, she's gonna go beat up Johnny Depp now." <laughs> It's it's really sad inside. I'm, I'm glad that they're going to recast her, but yeah, you know. yeah. I yeah. mean, hey, she filmed those scenes. She deserves to be in that movie. It happened yeah. at a different time. I mean, I could go back and recast the whole movie just because yeah. of that. So. All right, guys. So we're, let's wrap this up. Um, I we covered everything. I think. Yeah. Um, we're, I'm going to do a scale one to ten. I mean, the thing, like, really quick though, the thing I just thought of real well, quick. This even like had a part in it where it could have li- linked to. That talked about Green Lantern Corps movie. Yeah. Like, I was like, yeah. the show that they were going to make. Yeah. Like, kill the Green Lantern and the ring flies off. I was yes, like, the ring takes well, there's off. a Green Lantern Corps movie. We yeah. could have had a Green Lantern Corps movie if this movie had come out. So, it, this movie made me actually more angry at DC for the fact that the movie, the first movie was so bad because it cost seeing better movies yeah. that we could have seen. Yeah. Like, we could definitely. have had Cyborg in a yep. good movie. We could have had flash with an actual storyline that would have gave him a movie we would have had a green lantern corps movie that would have actually had a basis in the in the world and not just a random green lantern corps movie for no reason yeah so all right all right like all right we gotta wrap it up it just popped up in my head so we're we're gonna wrap it up b we're gonna wrap this up i'm gonna let's do a scale one through ten because it's a four-hour movie it deserves a one through ten scale i think um final thoughts on it Give me your final score. I'm gonna go first. I'll make it real quick. I, for okay. me personally, the other one was just so bad. This one was just so good, and I enjoyed all of it. I mean, I would say it's weird. I'd say nine point five, almost. It's like between nine and ten. Nine point five. I would say it's right there. It's just right there, and I think it's just hard because it's like I wanted more at that the ending and. I part of me, I would say 9.5. And my final thought is I want more and I'm so sad we didn't get it, but I'm so happy we got this. That's my, that's mm. me. Rocky, we'll go to you. Um, I, I mean, I'd have to agree for the most part, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. Um, I mean, the movie's almost like near perfect for me. Um, it's just a few things like within the movie that, I, I didn't enjoy that much. Like, for instance, like just Batman being a little bit out of character. Um, I don't really like the the Martian Manhunter design. Um, not a big fan of it. That was like definitely a very lackluster for me. Um, and just, uh, I don't know. I think some of the CGI like really wasn't that great. It was much, much better than the Joss Whedon version. But I still like, I still would have liked more characters that weren't just CGI. So eight out of 10 for me, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm being really critical here. So. Yeah. I mean, could some of that be because it was also four years ago, CGI. A lot of it was. <laughs> I don't think you went back and re CGI. No, yeah. yeah. Steppenwolf was redone. I mean, he looked yeah. so yeah, much Yeah. I'm better. saying, but a lot of it, I don't think he went and did all the CGI over again. 70 he? million. This, this recut cost yeah. right i mean they wow. did yeah. a lot of that and, the, and most of that was visual effect so yeah wow yeah yeah and he really needed yeah he didn't spend the money wisely then because i agree <laughs> with that <laughs> it's not knowing that hard. now i now agree with you on the You're cgi but... doing it at home i'm sure is a little uh, in a time crunch i'm sure it's a little bit different yeah, but yeah. And also the I aspect mean, ratio could have affected that too the way it looked because of the squishiness of it well, I mean, that was filmed as if it was going to go on IMAX, and basically, yeah, what I'm saying, it would be zoomed on, on in IMAX with screen, bars. It would have stretched out more. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mark, uh, your your oh, Rocky, what was oh hey, uh, Mark, yeah. your score and your final thought. All right, surprisingly, I'm going to surprise all of you here. I liked a DC movie. I actually thought this was good, which is surprising to even me as I'm watching it. I'm like, I don't like that. I like this movie because I'm not supposed to like DC movies. I'm supposed to think they all are terrible uh but no this this was really good it really changed my feelings towards the dc movie universe and the fact that it could be good there was a chance it would have been a good universe i actually would have wanted to see the movies that would have come from this uh I, it also depressed at the fact that 
nothing might come from this. This might be all we get. So I don't know if they're going to, if this is going to change Warner Brother minds and they might be like, okay, let's just retcon the original one and just use this as our Justice League movie and then movies come from this. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but for ratings, I'll give it a kind of like Rocky for like little things here and there. I'll knock it down to like an 8.5 for just small little little things um but yeah 8.5 out of 10 i did write because i originally thought we were doing out of five i was gonna give it a four for it being four hours long so <laughs> uh yeah no it was surprisingly good i went in not expecting anything off of the original one and yeah it changed my mind on like i knew Zack snyder could make movies so that wasn't anything surprising but it was just surprising that a movie that was so bad with only four minutes of extra footage shot was changed into a decent film like a really good film even right right it was just amazing to me how like all this footage was shot and ready to go and it just wasn't put together correctly it just goes to show like a different directors different different strokes through the world kind of thing yeah yeah totally but yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean I, yeah. I mean, I'll ask you guys. I had written this down. What do you think might come from if this movie is successful, as we all assuming it is? Is anything going to come from this? Do you think WB decides? I, to I almost do feel like we could have. A, we got the movement for the, the the Snyder cut. It would be interesting if we get a movement from fans saying we the want Snyder more. universe. Yeah. But uh, Rocky, correct me if I'm wrong. I did hear something over the weekend that Snyder said he's ready to move on from all this. So, like, if that's the case, we're we're getting nothing. But it maybe mm. it might re uh, energize him to say I I will continue. I I don't know if there's any truth behind that, Rocky. I don't know if you know more about that. So I mean, uh, Snyder did say that like that's it for his DCEU films. You know, he's he's stepping away from it. And I think with good reason for sure. I mean, uh, we can't forget the tragedy of his daughter um, being lost yeah. and all that. So I can understand why even right now, even, you know, 10 years from now, why he wouldn't want to come back to, to the DC universe. I mean, there's got to be a lot of pain attached attached to everything, you know. I'm yeah. glad that he can find some some kind of uh, some light in all this, you know, like them actually letting him release his version of the movie. And I'm glad that everybody's been so positive mm. towards him. I just, I, I do think that whether or not he said it, I feel like there is a lot of uh, pain attached to his involvement in this kind of, in this universe. And I, I think that if he does come back to it, it, it won't be for a while. Um, but I mean, he did say that, you know, this would be the last, but I mean, Quentin Tarantino also said that, you know, yeah, everyone's been his last movie movie for like three movie. films now. So, yeah. So, and well, then, Quint- and then, Quentin only has one more film in him because he's, he yeah. says at eight. So he, he he says he's gonna retire after his eighth film, which yeah, hasn't happened yet. Thing. Well, I mean, okay. So Aerosmith keeps touring. So I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's I would say so the Kiss, Who and every other band. Kiss Kiss, Kiss yeah. is always doing uh, they've been on yeah. they've been on a farewell tour for at least thirty years now. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, it's yeah. it's uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. Yeah, if I someone hope, throws a bucket load of money at him, I'm pretty sure he'd be more than I happy hope so, to but come no, back I mean, we can't we can't forget how much Zack Snyder has contributed to DC Universe already. I mean, uh, his cast in the Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman. Mm. Um, so I mean, he's he's in it, and his his wife is also the producer on every single DC movie. Yeah, so so yeah, his, he's involved, you know. His foot, his uh, his, his uh, casting, like you say, will forever be in you know in yeah, depth yeah. to him because he did did a fantastic job casting and you know except for batman but besides that everything else was great. oh yeah shut up um i it, it, wonder woman Think bad flick it was not his best it, this choice. movie made me want a better wonder woman film because the last wonder woman film was just so yeah. Yeah. par. yeah and i mean it was like anything- it was like a anything even compared to like the animated version like of uh, wonder woman that when she when they put out films it's like she's such an awesome warrior character and like she's so yeah. badass and like you get 1984 where she's just i don't the know neuter. she like she like kicks somebody through a giant drum yeah. and he just spin around and starts like, yeah. like get out of here but 
let Patty Jenkins direct them, but please don't write them ever again. Yeah. Like, no, exactly. she, she yeah, directed the first one. The, she didn't uh, write it. The Rogue Squadron don't... movie she's making. But besides that. It was that. just like, it was just kind of like you retold the first movie. That's basically yeah. what you did. And then you gave us a subpar villain that was silly. It was just yeah. a silly with movie. An, with yeah. an amazing actor, you know, like, yeah. it's just real. Yeah, I mean, it would have been even worse if it had been somebody else playing that character. Just yeah. imagine if someone else had gotten that part as opposed to him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I don't yeah. want to rehash uh, what's his name coming back every movie. Like, seriously, come on. It, it, yeah. it happened. We got to move on, folks. But yeah. as I say that, we need to wrap this up because this has been a long yeah. show. Thank you, Rocky, for coming on today's show. Of course. Yes. Like us, subscribe to us, uh, Geekonomics on Facebook and YouTube, and uh, we're on the Twitter. And yeah. Rocky, are you on the Twitter? Where where can people follow you? You know, I, I, mean, I am uh, I am not so much on the Twitter anymore. Um, but if you want to follow me, I, I do uh, a lot of art, uh, especially portraits. Um, and that's uh, the artist Rocky on Instagram. So cool. There you go. Me there. Artist Rocky on Instagram. All right, see all we'll, of Rocky's be art. we'll be back next week. And also, if you want uh, fantastic Macrons, oh, be sure yeah. to check out Stephanie's Macrons. At, what are they called now? I can't remember the name. It's, of uh, it's, Mama's. it's, Mama, it's Mama's Max. Um, yeah, you can check her out on Facebook and, and Instagram at both those places. Um, and we're also doing the markets. Uh, we'll do Coventry and Ellington uh, summer farmers markets. Um, they'll start in May. So yeah. you see us in in which the Ellington Farmers Market is one of the best farmers markets in the it's area. In my opinion, so. Coventry, um, Coventry is actually going back to uh, its original outdoor, tons of vendors, tons of live yeah. music um, this summer. So, yeah, it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty huge. Yeah, the, the 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 Ellington one. If you get a chance, it's an event to get to that one. There's a lot of a lot of good stuff there, and all those folks need I all see, of our um, support because they're all. I, Small I see market. Mark Siblings there all the time, but I never see Mark there. So yeah, maybe Mark Mark yeah no, my dad like goes there every weekend. That's like his thing because he goes there and then he goes to the the chuck wagon for breakfast. It's like a whole event for the Warnock <laughs> clan. So it's true. All but right, yeah. we'll be back so, next week. All those all things. Right. We'll see y'all. So it's long. Been a pleasure, guys. Good night.